We are autistic. When we were kids, we couldn't speak. In this world that was not made for us, art is how we thrive. Hi, welcome back. We are actually autistic artists. And in our next episode, we wanted to talk about something that is specific to being an artist. Um, when you are a performer or a teacher of arts, uh, it often can involve traveling or situations where your environment, your living space um, is different than your regular routine. And that can sometimes be difficult as an, an autist, <laughs> an autistic artist. Um, and uh, recently, actually, I had sort of the opposite happen. I was taking a break from working and teaching, and I had a string of family coming through to visit and staying in my house. So for about a month, um, I was not able to... Um, I guess, feel that I had control over my space and find a place where I could actually feel um, relaxed and comfortable because even if there was another person in the house, even if we weren't in the same room, um, that builds up sort of a, a bit of tension in my body. Um, and I actually also almost always end up with some sort of physical ailment as a response, um, my body's response to these stresses of having other people in my space. I <laughs> had a, I, I got diagnosed with a wart in my ear this last time. Um, but as soon as the people were gone, <laughs> within a week it was all resolved. Um, and it was very helpful for me to realize in that moment, um, based on my past experience, that uh, this weird thing that was happening in my ear was likely my body's response to um, all of the stress that I was feeling from having people in my space. And um, I essentially, I knew in advance that I had to take a break from Tycho and a break from, you know, my teaching because I wouldn't be able to handle uh, those responsibilities because my routine and my space was interrupted. So uh, today we're going to talk more about, about that and how, how you can try to prepare yourself and then, you know, maybe be unsuccessful at accomplishing any of those preparations or the preparations being uh, effective at all. Um, my mom actually was traveling recently the same time that I had people in my house um, for Tycho and for music. And so I'm gonna pass it over to them to talk about a little bit about how you try to prepare yourself before you were on the road for a long stretch of time. Um, and I'll just, start us with that. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. And I just realized that we forgot to introduce ourselves at the very beginning. Oh, it's okay. Oh, and this is Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Manman and I use they them pronouns and thank you, Carrie, for the introduction. <laughs> and um yeah, so as a working as a taiko artist, freelance taiko artist, I majority of my career involves traveling to different groups and work with different groups. And it's interesting, like when I learn more about autism and a lot of people sharing that, like, oh, it's difficult to travel. I'm like, hmm, um, how does that, what is it that work and doesn't work for me? And um, I, I want to, uh, I want to highlight a terms that I learned over the last two years that really helped me to unpack this is uh, autistic burnout. And um, because like Carrie, you just mentioned the physiological part of how your body respond to the stimulation. I experienced a lot of that too. And, and it's hard for me to identify like before whether or not is this, am I having depression like, or or it feels like my body's sick, but it's just I, I just have trouble get it, getting out of bed, like after a trip that I come home and I just have no energy, no motivation to do anything. Um, but then I have to fall right back into my regular local teaching schedule and work and rehearsal. And, and but now after I learn about autistic burnout, I'm like, oh, my gosh, that makes so much sense um, because of like 
falling out of the routine, being in a new place, new environment, and um, and stimulation for being on the road, like being on an airplane, it's way, <laughs> that just, yeah, I, I don't even have the right word to describe it. And this time around, actually, I, I just went to Tucson, Arizona to work with Odaiko Sonora. And this time I actually choose to take the Amtrak from LA to Tucson. And I'm so glad I made that choice. Um, and that is one of the way that I found how I can be compassionate for my own needs as neurodivergence. And yeah, and actually in the Taiko community, I really appreciate um, how accommodating. And so it's kind of like I can, I have the flexibility to have comfort like to be staying at other people's home um, and then being able to ask for what I need. Um, so I think our time is up for the short components. Um, yeah, and uh, if you would like to hear more about Manman's travels and our discussion, we're gonna go a bit deeper into autistic burnout as an artist. Um, maybe talk about meltdowns a little bit. And uh, you can click the link below for information on how to access that. In the meanwhile, we're going to take a long, deep breath, expand through the belly and in through the chest, up into the head and release, and maybe we'll see you over there. <laughs>